Hello folks, this is Paragon RG, and we are casting some top-level games today. In particular, we are watching 3DB, because he is one of the first top players to have some games within a couple hours of the latest patch being dropped. So, I want to I want to watch his gameplay to see what he's been up to, if anything has changed. 3DB is primarily, well, we're looking at Kaposh here, but 3DB is primarily a Chinese player. The last game I streamed, he was Delhi, which was a bit surprising to me. This time he's back to the Chinese. So I haven't seen the new Springholds in action yet. And we know they're better against other siege weapons and worse against other units. And they're more expensive overall. So I am curious to see if 3DB changes anything. If he has success with that. Or perhaps he continues with the sort of astronomical clock tower castle age. And pushes with spring ults, and then in that case, maybe we'll get to see spring ults uh, succeed or fail. And either way, it should be interesting. So, to this game in particular, intro aside, Capoch, the Argentinian, is on the west side here in the blue, and he's playing as the Mongols. Ovo is in a nice, nice spot here, right beside his town center, and an early stable going down. So we expect to see some kind of early pressure, and I think that makes a lot of sense. We're on Mountain Pass, and there's really only one way to get to your opponent. You do not want your opponent walling off. I wouldn't even be surprised to see 3DB move up here and wall it. China is definitely more of a sieve that you want to get to the late game. Mongols are more of an early game sieve. Not to say that they can't be successful in the late game, but it's pretty hard to deal with Chinese siege and cannons. 3DB is on the east, southeast side of the map as red and is playing as the Chinese. We'll keep an eye on his build. I don't expect too much to change just yet. So we have the Imperial Official supervising the mill, which increases the drop-off for villagers by 20%. You see the 12s coming up there for, for food. So should be a pretty pretty good castle age for him. And what he'll do is just basically when this thing hits 20, you'll see the Imperial Official walk off, bring the tax gold in, and he'll rely on that gold for his uh, Dark Age gold income to get to the Feudal Age. In the meantime, he actually did make a second scout, which I didn't notice. So we see two of them running around on the map. That will help to grab extra sheep and to generally just keep an eye on what the Mongol player is doing. So are these scouts coming out? Yeah, uh, two times scouts. This makes a ton of sense to me. Professional scouts has very much been the meta for... Can't say for very long. The game is changing uh, pretty fast, I would say. As the weeks go on, we see different different styles of play. So scouts being used pretty often now. So he'll pump out these scouts and he'll uh, use them for aggression. And then he'll probably research professional scouts once he hits the feudal age. At which point he'll run around and grab as much of the deer on the map as he can. And in the meantime, those scouts can be used to try to prevent his opponent from walling off. 3B looking pretty good for getting to the Feudal Age. Almost has the gold he needs. He's 15 off, and he should be able to grab that any second now, and he just needs the food. So looking good. If I had to guess, if he's scouted the stable, we might see the Barbican of the Sun. He may be worried about some sort of crazy scouts play from the Mongol player. In the meantime, though, I don't see too many more scouts out for Kavos. So... He has five military units, That's so he made four scouts, and of course starting with his Khan. So four scouts isn't too crazy. Actually, I'm wrong on that. Two of them were actually horsemen, so... Uh, and what do we see? Yeah, so Barbican of the Sun going down to protect the wood line. And this may even help if he wants to add a town center here uh, later. Uh, it might help defend the area. Oh, canceling it. Is he going to do it up here? Okay, there he goes. So wants to protect this wood line and the gold. I think that's pretty reasonable. Keep an eye on these units here and see what shenanigans they get up to. Just running around for now, looking for... Looking for trouble, basically. Only two villagers on this, so he does have to, have to make sure his landmark goes down. You don't want to delay your feudal age, or rather have... Allow your opponent to delay your feudal age. Buy too much. There's a couple of scouts out. Those horsemen are actually pretty mean in this age zone. You can see him having to run 
villagers home. This town center will help out quite a bit. So, so far I see very, very good micro. It's a little hard to see if any villagers have gone down. But uh, it doesn't look like anyone's lost any units until just now Kapoch has killed... I'm guessing a villager. Because I don't think he would have made another scout. Unless I am mistaken on that. Now they've each killed one and lost one, so... Head back to current resources, and Kapoch leaves at a good time. The Barbican of the Sun comes up. It does 25 damage a pop, so it's not too much he can do around there with units that are this early. Let's head over to him, and he's actually up. I didn't see him hit the Feudal Age, but he's up with the Deer Stones. I have a feeling he, he sped that up a little bit. Quite a few more scouts coming out, and I'm guessing we see professional scouts coming in, and we do. So we'll watch him run around on the map for a little while. Uh, also, professional scouts just coming in from the Chinese player as well. And you see, he has a stable that's being supervised, this sneaky Imperial official here. So, uh, these horsemen being built in seven, or rather... Scouts, there we go. They do, it kind of weirds me out that they're the farthest right when they're the cheapest and earliest unit you can have access to. Anyway, he can build them in six seconds flat. So, that, uh, that gap... Uh, yeah, just kill this horseman. There we go. That gap in his opponent getting that stable in the Dark Age, that's that's pretty much pretty much covered by now. So, Kaboch has nine military. He has now seven. In fact, putting out horsemen now. So, we're seeing... This is actually pretty neat. Uh, I think it's pretty rare that we see horsemen at this stage. Not too many, at least. And we're seeing a nice little skirmish with them. There have been suggestions. I know the Viper in particular suggested that maybe a scout should be slower when they're carrying carcass, uh, deer carcasses, which I think would actually be a pretty good idea. It would mean that you can't you can't just grab a deer carcass from under a bunch of spearmen. You know, they'll get a couple of hits off, or uh, a single horseman will be able to chase a scout down a little more quickly, things like that. Like, this scout will go down, but, but look how hard it is to kill this one. Pretty, pretty difficult. Okay. So yeah, more cavalry coming out. It's pretty interesting. 11 military from 3DB and 11 from Kapoch. So very even military-wise. Kapoch does have two more villagers, and I believe that's because of scouts produced by 3DB, which would have come out of his town center. And so that means he's not making villagers in that time. So... 3DB running around, grabbing the deer that are right beside Kapoch. I think that's a good play. You might as well while you're here. And in the meantime, he'll try to kill his opponent's scouts. So yeah, I I, I admit, I, I'm enjoying this. Maybe, maybe it's simple. I'm a simple man. But uh, we usually don't see this kind of Dark Age pressure and shenanigans going on. It does look to me that Kapoch has the larger military. So 13. Well, 3DB has 16, apparently. Maybe, uh, maybe there's enough stragglers. But it looks like he's outnumbered here. So, where are the scouts? I mean, I thought the scouts would... Did, did they make it home? They did make it home. Okay, so the scouts with the deer on their back made it home. 3DB, uh, not exactly a cleanup, uh, but something of a, a stalemate here. And I think he's, he's overextended. You might as well save some of these injured horsemen. And he'll head on home. The coach will... Uh, chase him on route. Look at that view. From up on the mountain. And there's the wall coming down from 3DB. So he's going to hang out here to do everything he can to get that wall up. And then he'll stall the game. So do we see a second... I mean, Kapoch has quite a bit of... He has a lot of resources. Looks like he's headed straight for the Castle Age. In the meantime, 3DB has actually quite a bit of food. Though not very much gold. So I guess both are heading to Castle Age, but Kabuch will be clicking up quite a bit early. That being said, with this wall up, uh, whether or not he'll be able to take advantage of it is another question entirely. 3DB continuing to press. I want to keep a close eye on military here. So it's actually 19 to 9. So the fact that Kabuch has been saving resources for the castle age is showing here and he's actually building it you know this might not seem like a lot but these villagers were not collecting gold for a bit and you know that that 
tower delayed his castle age significantly. And we actually see some gold expenditure. So, is that a, what is there, a blacksmith or something? Huh. No, no upgrade on the tower. So yeah, his gold went down, and I'm not sure why. He's going to try to push back out. That being said, even just the number of scouts. I mean, there's enough of a meat shield here that I don't think you're going to get through what 3DB currently has. Kapoch, I believe, has clicked up here, and we see him going up with the step readout. And this is probably the right call. He's not going to be too aggressive on this map. He is walled in now. So you might as well use it as an opportunity to... Uh, boom isn't the right word, but, but play the economic game and be able to drop off 50% more gold. It's a pretty big deal for the Mongols. Scouts headed up to grab whatever deer carcasses are left. Don't think they can do anything to the boar. Where is that deer? It has it on the mini-map. I think he's looking for it. Yeah, he's... Your guess is as good as mine, sir. I can't see it even in the replay view, so... Hidden deer carcass there. He'll head home. Let's keep an eye on... So, the fact that you can drop them off... So, idle villagers here, not ideal. But the fact that they can be dropped off... Yeah, he needs to get these on berries. Carcasses can be dropped off here, and the Imperial official can continue to supervise. Makes it a really big deal. And additionally, he can always get survival techniques to increase the rate at which he goes through those deer. 3DB, yeah, a lot of resources in the bank. So much wood as well. So, high, you know, when you see a lot of wood in Age of Empires, it's usually because of a macro slip. There's rarely a time to save up too much wood. You know, there, you could imagine... Imagine a player had 800 wood going into Feudal Age. Well, that might be to drop two town centers. That would be pretty reasonable. Um, but there's no, I don't see any similar plan here for 3DB. So we'll keep an eye. He just spent a bunch. We'll keep an eye on what that is. This wall going down really quickly. And this is one of the things with people are realizing with scouts is they're cheap. They're fast. You can run up to walls and just torch them down. So any delay that 3DB was hoping for is effectively over. And veteran spearmen coming in now from Kapoch as well. And it looks like, yeah, I see a lancer in there. I don't know that he'll upgrade his horsemen. There's only a couple in there, and they're pretty injured. So that may not be a wise play. But he has the astronomical clock tower out. And here's where things get interesting. Because these springholds just aren't the powerhouses that they used to be, and they cost more. So instead of 200 wood, 200 gold, 400 total resources... They're now 500 total resources. And that matters. That's 25% more, and they do less damage to regular units. Crossbows coming out from 3DB. I think he mostly needs to stall here until he gets some kind of mass and is able to deal with this. If he hangs out closer to his town center, I think that is a good idea. He has the Barbican of the Sun here. Maybe pull some villagers away and focus them chopping trees into this area. We haven't seen a second town center from him yet. So, both in Castle Age, but Kapoch showing a much, much higher score. Looking at the numbers right now, 3DB, 39 economy, 40 now, 45 for Kapoch. So, probably after this encounter, 3DB is behind in his economy. That being said, Kapoch needs to be careful not to overextend. The scouts are cheap, but once they go down, it's true that your meat shield is gone. And so... You'll just generally be less effective in combat after that point. You'll have to spend precious time making scouts instead of lancers and things like that, which may require more stables and so on and so on. So, you know, in short, don't lose units if you don't have to. Another villager going down from 3DB. A few crossbowmen coming out. This should start to be enough that Poach does, won't really want to, to deal with it. And he's taking out lancers, which are quite expensive. So... Uh, I'd like, yeah, let's see these. Hopefully we see these pulled back here. Looks like he might lose. Okay, so there's enough crossbows. He shouldn't lose any more of them at that point. Score definitely way off. So Kapoch's gold income is indeed really high because of that step readout. But do we see anything else in particular from him? We see a prayer tent. 
So he'll be picking up relics pretty soon. And we see a siege workshop going down as well. Which is interesting. We don't usually see a lot of that from the Mongols. Simply because they can place a blacksmith and they can research siege engineering. And they can pretty much build whatever they want in the field with the exception of cannons. Of course, you don't get cannons in the castle age. So I am curious about that siege workshop. I'm not sure. Maybe it's an upgrade thing. He wants uh, some sort of speed upgrade. Pretty B has to be careful with this. Another villager walking forward, but... You know, he, yeah, he goes down quickly to even just veteran spearmen at this point. So maybe if he can tap, tap quickly enough to get some walls up. But no, it looks like another villager going down from him. And I think he needs some sort of plan to get back into this game. Monastery coming down from him as well. And I don't think we saw... We haven't seen the Song Dynasty. Not a second TC. His wall went down... You know, when when it's such a, uh, a you know, a single place to to wall off, I really think we're going to start seeing players use stone walls. You just can't burn them down with scouts, and so you have to bring in siege. So that would have given them the time he needed. But now there are Mongols in his base, and that's something you never want to hear. Lots of lancers coming in, but lots of spearmen from Capote. So good pulling away that charge. His crossbowman. Uh, you know, could be better against spearmen, but ultimately they can kite, they can run away, they can shoot. So um, he should be okay here to, to pick away at 3DB's forces. And if he can separate them enough, maybe the Lancers can jump on smaller groups. So he'll push back out. I think of that brace, but those Lancers going down really quickly. So this may even, may even have been cost effective for 3DB, despite fighting... Spearman. Now, he does need to be careful to not get any extra shots on him, but Crossbowman starting to take out the Spearman, and of course, the Lancers won't be any good either. This Springled is probably going to go down to the Knights uh, if, he's, if he's not able to protect it with the Spears, so yeah, look at that thing go down. Notice, uh, sorry, not notice, note that the health has not changed. Did I get that right? Yeah, the health has not changed for the Springled. The cost changed. Their speed actually did go down a little bit, which will affect that situation in some way. But that's just the effect of knights jumping on a single springle. Not too much to springle can do. Market? <laughs> Forward market. That's odd. But this has been really good play. Not too many crossbowmen from 3DB, but sort of just enough to, to chip away at his opponent's military and to push him back out. Step Redoubt has moved to this bottom gold patch. Needs to get rid of this Gur, though. Most of these villagers are dropping off to the wrong place here. So hopefully Kapoch will fix that. But I'm just generally trying to figure out why Kapoch's score is so much higher. So 3DB, 45 villagers, 26 military versus 56 and 15. So quite a bit better military for 3DB, but 10 villagers less. So curious how he is going to make up that deficit, or if his plan is all-out aggression at this point, and he thinks that he has the military advantage and can do it. So another, uh, if you're curious how this disappeared, that's the effect of building another Ovo. The last one you have disappears as soon as you do that. Okay, so moving forward here, outpost going down from 3DB. I like that a lot. Might as well have safe places to Hide in. You can even hide lancers in there. For some reason, they need to get away from something. Uh, like a like a low, you know, an injured lancer can shoot. Might as well shoot an arrow out of a tower if you think they're going to die. Otherwise, uh, and then in general, he'll get good line of sight over this area. So I like this a lot. I to be honest, I mean, now maybe it doesn't make sense in this situation. He has the military advantage, but I was going to say I'd love to see a stone wall here, but that may just be resources that 3DB is not willing to spend. Um, he needs all of his resources for military. And we see a mass migration of buildings at the bottom. It looks almost goofy on the mini-map. But barracks, stable, archery range. Barracks, archery range. All going toward the Ovo back here for double production and or improved upgrades. I'm not actually positive which upgrades can be improved from... Yeah, okay, so no upgrades... 
can be improved from the stable at least. Maybe we'll check back on that. More wall coming from 3DB. Trying to really wall his opponent in here. And we see a Manganel and a single Springhold. So, I mean, this to me looks like a much healthier use of Siege. I'm still somewhat surprised that they came out of a Siege workshop rather than simply researching Siege engineering. Um, I mean, to be honest, it's more expensive to make the workshop than to research Siege engineering, which is maybe a problem in its own right. But we'll see how 3db manages to handle this siege get some water here now he does have the clock tower and this is the clock tower nest of bees so he can certainly make a couple of springholds for example and here's here's one coming out now and uh and what is this siege speed yeah by 20 percent so that makes sense to me. Uh, he knows his Springholds are better, and Springholds are really good still at anti-siege, and has have more hit points. So, you might as well make one or two, and it should only take two shots to take out a regular Springhold now with other Springholds. So, I'd like to see at least a couple out of 3DB, but overall, so far, this composition has felt much healthier to me, so it's rather early to say. Maybe this game will still turn into a... Uh, you know, 30 on 30 Spring Old War. But so far, so good with what I'm seeing from the patch. Definitely more Spring Olds continuing to file out here. This Siege Workshop has pretty much been set to create them non-stop. So we're going to find out how effective this is. I mean, one one counter, in theory, if Spring Olds are nerfed, is to just not make any Siege. Don't make any Siege, and the Spring Olds have nothing to counter. So, how many do we see? I guess we only see two two springles here from 3DB. Um, you know, that may still be too many from the point of view of you've committed these resources now that your opponent is able to counter. That being said, he should be able to take out this Manganel with only two shots, and we'll see if he's able to. I'd like to see that. Pulling back the Manganel as he can. So that'll be one of the games here, because if you can snipe your opponent's Manganel, there may not be a lot more that you need. Yep, taking pot shots at it now. And you'll notice it doesn't... It's not actually two shots, because it has a little bit of armor. So I think after two shots, it would have something like 16 health. So this is a bit of a mess here. He does want the battle by the gate for his clock... That was a really good shot with the clock tower and S to Bs. 3DB starting to bust out of his own gate here. At first, that wasn't looking like a good fight for him, but perfect use of his area of effect siege weapons. And I'll be honest, I didn't see what happened to all the other siege of Kapoch. Is this over? This is over. I did not expect that at all. 3DB overwhelms his opponent. Kapoch over committing to Springholds, and that's the first we've seen of that. So, folks, this has been Paragon RG. Thank you for watching. Uh, 3DB beat Kapoch Chinese versus the Mongols on Mountain Pass. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you next time.